Ah, oh, London. What a town. History around every corner, and a tourist photographing it. Pubs serving up a pint and a smile. All that music, theatre and art. And multiculturalism. And the world oldest underground, the Tube. The class of cities, really. Top shelf stuff. Only took 12,000 years to build it up. And one night to tear it all down. Our status. Perimeter security's down, but plenty of your flying friends about. Fucking hell. Mickey is mad. Like. Dalton, no time to waste. Yes, ma'am. Really mad. I'm in. Any idea what we're up against, Bailey? If you haven't brushed off, I might. Ever consider leaving these security threats to the authorities? That's rich, Bagley. The government would sooner arrest us for trying to help than actually do something useful. Let us sort this one on our own. Carefully, Dalton. Bagley, are you detecting a little worry in Sabine's voice? Brilliant. Asking the computer about feelings. This explains so much. Shut it, you two, and get to work. There she is. a favor and keep it quiet Dalton if they don't shoot me I won't shoot them how's that update she ain't mad She's just a bit quick to jump. I've got loads of dead set gear down here. Now, why do you suppose that is? What? How did they get their hands on it? I don't know. But someone wants to make it look like dead set was here. Shit. You need to proceed with extreme caution, Dalton. Who are these men in black, anyway? Nothing identifying. I suspect that's by design. Oh, fuck me. The entire place is rigged to blow. Jesus, those canisters. Is that RDX nitrogen enough to level Parliament? 
Can you locate a detonator, Bagley? Not exactly, but there's a device streaming a fuckload of encrypted data from the floor above you. Yeah, that fits the bill. On my way. Bagley, is that not the detonator? No, but it's a transmitter sending a signal to a device on the floor above us. Safe to assume that would be the detonator we're looking for. What is this? Set propaganda all around the bombs. These pricks are gonna blow up Parliament and hang it on us. Not if you get to that detonator first. of Commons. Whoever these men in black are, they've got brass bollocks to set up in the center of government. Mickey's a special kid. on the detonator and it's definitely live Bagley I'm gonna need some help with this yes you are but sadly I'm locked out fuck well, we don't have a chance without Bagley wait, wait. I might know a workaround we trained your manual overrides at MI5 you're full of surprises be quick about it all right Bagley do your thing I'm in and the bombs have just armed themselves. Well, that may complicate matters. For fuck's sake. Can you defuse them or not? Of course I can. But I might also trip another failsafe and vaporize you. So, fair warning. I expect this to draw some attention your way, Dalton. Oh, I'm counted on it. Company at our back door. Shit. Dalton, we've got some heat here at HQ. How long is this going to take, Bagley? Depends how often you interrupt me with questions. All right, everyone. Faces on, guns out. It's about to get real. Fuck. But we love them, dot US oily. Let's have a look around. Mickey is always a love child. Okay. Let's just say I'm both impressed and annoyed by how sophisticated this anti-tamper security is. Still working? Bagley, tell me you're close. I'm through security, now wading through terabytes of decoy code looking for the detonation sequence. Someone's shooting!
problem, Dalton. I need your physical appendages now. What's wrong? There are three slots on the left. One of them is the receiver. You need to pull the controller wire. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm fucking not. Pull the wire. If this gets me blown up... Bombs defused. <laughs> See? That wasn't so bad, was it? Ugly, you bastard. You're gonna give me a bloody heart attack then. <laughs> whoa, 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 what the fuck am I looking at? It appears Parliament is not the only target. More bombs are going live as we speak. On screen, Bradley. Fucking hell, we need to get the word out. Those sites need to be evacuated. They're spread out all over London. There isn't any time. But my sister's at the tone conference. We have to do something. I picked up a transmitter on the roof that is sending out a signal to the other bomb sites. If you can reach it, I can shut it all down. Sabine! Fuck! Dalton, we're breached! Go! The roof! Sabine, what's going on? We're being raided. It's a bloodbath. Her protocol is to wipe everything, including Bagley. I need him for the transmitter. I know, but if they get him, they get everything. Names, ops, locations. Okay, I'll do it the old-fashioned way. Wipe him. Yes, wipe me. Do it, Sabine, and get the hell out of there. Fuck. Okay, Bagley's down. You're on your own. Dalton, this goes. He won't. I'll see you at the rally point. I promise. Good luck. with some important work. Important work? Killing thousands of... Exactly. To save the world. You do know Londoners have died before. Hmm? The plague, the Great Fire, the Blitz. There's not much fun. But destruction is always the cure. And it begins today. Zero day. Oh my god. Ago, a series of explosions devastated three sites in London. Authorities are asking residents to remain in their homes as the situation continues to develop. We have received no official casualty total, but it is expected gathered for a series of candlelight vigils that brought closure to thousands of families and indeed to an entire city. London is now laser oh. They attend Downing Street where Nigel Cass, CEO of private he military died. company Albion, received a mandate to secure London. Cass has vowed to hunt down dead set terrorism responses to the 
Albion used cutting-edge artificial intelligence systems and autonomous drones to capture the remaining members of DedSec. A stark warning to would-be insurgents. Corporations are posting record profits due to increased efficiencies in production and distribution. Zero Day is a fucking lunatic man. Yeah, so all the other watchdogs games have a main cast. Except this one. Where you recruits of aliens and down following prosecutions of the leaders of four of London's five largest criminal syndicates, the streets of Camden and Brixton. As Albion's mandate is extended indefinitely by the government, life finally begins to return to normal. Curfews and travel restrictions have been lifted in all boroughs thanks to the deployment. News outlets, reports of rioting in Trafalgar Square have been greatly exaggerated. Possibly by foreign meddlers pushing a false narrative through social media. Albion is in complete control of a few great reprimand the public about the circulation of fake news, conspiracy theories persisting in. So we are killing civilians. That terrorist group dead set were framed for the bombings have been roundly rejected. Our own reporters could not find a single Londoner willing to expound those theories on camera. The facts. No, no hiring. No death. Well, unless I die. I need to assemble a team, but I can't reboot DedSec alone. Let me break into London CTOS and see who's available. and we've been discussing the hacktivist, now alleged terrorist group, DedSec, on this week's Buccaneer Radio. I have Colin calling in. Colin, what's your take? Now, I've been saying from the start we should have round up DedSec and thrown them in jail. Now, I'll say they should all be lined up and shut. You don't find it awfully convenient that they've been fingered as the attackers, but we've seen no proof. Look at town! Look at our city! So we are hiring survivors of this and giving them guns? That sounds familiar. Albion's put more civilians in the hospital in the past few months than DedSec ever has. I smell a scapegoat. Now I have Emily calling in. What Emily, new out? What's your take? I your hate this robot's movements. Control. The government's just framing DedSec because they want to make it seem like they have this under control. They probably have no clue who was behind the bombings. Spider bit. That look good on the news, does it? DedSec's been a thorn in their side. Who better to pin it on? Angie, I have you next. What do you make of all this? I think if anything, dead sex showed their true colors. It's terrifying to think we harbored such a dangerous element for years. Terrorists in our own backyard. Do you find dead sex more frightening than the different gangs in London like Plan Kelly? theme today. Exactly.
situation is worse than I thought. Brilliant. Let's get the people of London on board. All right, what kind of team should I assemble? to see you're alive. Or if you're still committed to the cause, DedSec needs you. I'll send you the coordinates to one. Last safe house. Meet me there. Fine. I'm Andy, and joining me to analyze the latest blow flies to emerge from the corpse of a once free Britain, it's Alice. Hello, Andy. And today, we're going to talk to you about Albion, uh, your friends and mine. Alice, the government has extended Albion's contract and have also boasted that violent crime has plummeted to a record low. Now, extending Albion's contract, to me, that's like having a pet dog, let's call it Nigel for the sake of argument, that attacks you every single day and thinking to yourself, wouldn't it be nice if Nigel had puppies? <laughs> that contract has been extended so many times, it's like the neck of a politician that's criticised the government. <laughs> I'm not sure entirely how those contract extension negotiations went, probably, like, like, a, like a footballer. 
In the old days, I assume Albion's agent was leaking stories to the press about how our favourite private militia was being tapped up by Barcelona. <laughs> the government panics and thinks, well, we'd better get them signed up before it's too late. But still, violent crime, a record low, although I imagine that probably depends exactly how you count it. If you include violent crime committed by the state, either themselves or via Albion, their chosen violent crime contractors, who provide such a very valuable bargain service of beating people up, well, it's probably not quite as low as the figures suggest. I don't know. I, I think they're probably right. Who has the opportunity to commit violent crime these days anyway? The moment you pick up a fruit knife, you get tasered by a robot policeman and deported for looking Bulgarian. <laughs> It's a much more peaceful society. It's just much less of a society. I want to know the details of the contracts, Alice. I mean, are they paid per dissident duffed up? Is it is a set rate for each extrajudicial state mugging? And what Avengers. is Avengers. Well, they certainly look like they're trying to hit a quota of some kind. <laughs> but what is, the, what is the set rate? Is it what, 99.95 crypto's bargain? It seems very reasonable to do. <laughs> I, I imagine they don't ask too much anyway. Album because it's just so nice to get paid for doing your hobby anyway, isn't it? Imagine it doesn't even feel like work. <laughs> I mean, who needs violent crime anymore anyway? You know, you can just starve to death without even starting a gang war. We do have to ask exactly what the Prime Minister made of all this. Uh, let's ask him. Always Avengers. You're from number 10 Downing Street. Auto drive now to save Sorry, you've missed him. I'm afraid he's popped out for the decade. Oh, never mind. Is there anyone else I can talk to? Yes, of course. There's a shady cabal of vested interests who control him and prop him up in power. Great, I'll have a chat with them then. Oh, and you remember when you get away with prank calls? I've downloaded a patch to your optics so you can access our security system. It's set up so that I can't just let someone who isn't dead sec in. You'll have to do the manual override. Secret passages and hidden bases. Oh, I fucking miss this shite. One of Sabine's, are you? I'll see you downstairs later then. Open sesame. Anyone around? Guess not. Let's find the power then. Coming up in today's episode of The Upload, we're talking about how Bagley managed to conquer London. Pretty much my favorite topic. I could talk for hours about the rise of the AI system. It's easy to forget about its origins. It's so present everywhere we go now. Bagley just kind of blends into the background. Bagley is the service AI that's present in every optic device. Whether you're using the optic, Bagley will be there. The AI is streamed to your optic from Bloom Central Command Center, and it was first created by Sky Larson, our tech hero, as part of her techno utopia. You gotta idea. love this layout slash Sark slash. In my mind, it's no surprise that Bagley became so popular. It's funny, useful, fast. It's a great companion and really just makes life so much easier. I mean, when you look back at all the service AIs that used to exist, they just can't compete. When you ask Bagley anything, there's a quick answer and loads of information available to you. One day, I let Bagley answer all of my messages for a whole 24 hours and no one even noticed the difference. The other competitors really just couldn't compete with Bagley. Their answers were so much worse, they didn't understand anything, and Bagley pretty much gets Best everything base. right first time. Favorite base. Do you have any idea with guy why here. Bagley really beat all Minus the six slash well, ten. Data, isn't it? Ever since Broker hooked up with Bloom, that's when things changed. And really, that's not actually that great. Bloom has data on everybody. They collect information about everything you're doing across the web through your optic headset. Isn't the AI only good because of Bloom surveillance? Well, I suppose so, but I'd prefer not to talk about that side of things. Bagley is so special because it's been trained on this huge cache of information. That's how these AI systems work, or at least used to work. I mean, we don't really know that much about the latest version because there's so much secrecy around the tech. But they're given this huge amount of training data. It's basically a huge database that's used to teach the AI about patterns in behavior. 
you know, so if you always travel the same way to your house, it can predict when you're going to go and get a self-driving car ready for you before you even ask for it. That's pretty terrifying. In some ways, I don't want this data to, to drive my life. It understands too much at times. Have you heard some of the rumors around the hacked version of Bagley? I've heard mutterings, yes. I've heard it's been used by DedSec. I wouldn't put it past them. It's pretty well known that they're not fans of Bloom. But the idea of a souped-up version of Bagley, given it's already so intelligent, is a bit terrifying. I wonder what they could actually make it do. From the Buccaneer, this is the bug. Hello, resistors. It's bug time. Are you all sitting comfortably? No? Good. That's as it should be. This is the bug. I'm Andy, and joining me to analyze the latest blowflies to emerge from the corpse of a once free Britain, it's Alice. Hello, Andy. And today, we're going to talk to you about Albion. Uh, your friends and mine, Alice. The government has extended Albion's contract and have also boasted that violent crime has plummeted to a record low. Now, extending Albion's contract, to me, that's like having a pet dog, let's call it Nigel for the sake of argument, that attacks you every single day and thinking to yourself, wouldn't it be nice if Nigel had puppies? <laughs> that contract has been extended so many times, it's like the neck of a politician that's criticised the government. <laughs> I'm not sure entirely how those contract extension negotiations went, probably, like, like, a, like a footballer. In the old days, I assume Albion's agent was leaking stories to the press about how our favourite private militia was being tapped up by Barcelona. Or by <laughs> the government panics and thinks, well, we better get them signed up before it's too late. But still, violent crime, a record low, although I imagine that probably depends exactly how you count it. If you include violent crime committed by the state, either themselves or via Albion, their chosen violent crime contractors, who provide such a very valuable bargain service of beating people up, well, it's probably not quite as low as the figures suggest. I don't know. I, I think they're probably right. Who has the opportunity to commit violent crime these days anyway? The moment you pick up a fruit knife, you get tasered by a robot policeman and deported for looking Bulgarian. <laughs> it's a much more peaceful society. It's just much less of a society. I want to know the details of the contracts, Alice. I mean, are they paid per dissident duffed up? Is it, is it a set rate for each extrajudicial state mugging? And what is that rate? What do you think? Well, they certainly look like they're trying to hit a quota of some kind. <laughs> but what, is the, what is the set rate? Is it what, 99.9? five cryptos bargain it seems very reasonable indeed <laughs> I, I imagine they don't ask too much anyway because it's just so nice to get paid for doing your hobby anyway isn't it i imagine it doesn't even feel like work <laughs> i mean who needs violent crime anymore anyway you know you can just starve to death without even starting a gang war we do have to ask exactly what does the prime minister make of all this uh let's ask him oh, I, I hope they pick up Hello, you're through to number 10 Downing Street. Hello, is the Prime Minister there, please? <laughs> Let me just check. Sorry, you've missed him. I'm afraid he's popped out for the decade. Oh, never mind. Is there anyone else I can talk to? Yes, of course. There's a shady cabal of vested interests who control him and prop him up in power. Great, I'll have a chat with them then. Oh, Andy, remember when you'd get away with prank calls without people coming around to your house to beat the shit out of you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy time. You're listening to the bar. Did you think the Prime Minister will, will, will ever come back? I don't think we've ever had a Prime Minister. Well, that's a much more reassuring way of looking at things. <laughs> I mean, what have we become, Alex? When I mean, you look at the state of our politics, we're supposed to have the mother of parliaments. Well, this is one mother that has emphatically abandoned her kids in the woods to be brought up by wolves. And let me tell you, that never works out like it does in the stories. Wolves are bad parents, <laughs> unless you're a wolf, in which case they can do a job bringing you up as a wolf. Do not give your children to wolves. And do we actually own anything as a country now? Is there anything we haven't flogged off for profit? Oh, I think we've basically just become a homeopathic Britain. Yeah. Diluted and diluted until there's barely a trace of the original Britain left. But some quackish lunatics insist it actually works better that way. It's total bullshit. Is there anything left? New on the bug this week, a new feature. The bug off feature. Uh, the person who has most irritated us uh, in Britain uh, this week, we're going to tell to bug off and to get things going. I'm going to nominate uh, Big Nigel. Nigel. I don't think Wolf is ready for children. This place is a bastion of freedom. I'm just not sure that that kind of freedom should involve Big Nigel expressing his freedom to run a private army. I guess. Historically, there is a precedent, the East India Company. That was a trading house with an army of 250,000 soldiers, which is a lot for a company. The Bug PLC has Alice with a water pistol, but crucially, <laughs> compared with Albion, the East India Company didn't operate its quarter of a million strong army in London. Uh, it did it a long way away, out of sight, 
out of mind. Anyone to nominate for, for the bug off, Alex? I think today's bug off for me goes to my streaming service. I'm sick of being recommended things based on things I already like. The other day it recommended me to watch a reality TV competitive dating show set in a nude commune. Andy, I watched it and I liked it and I do not want to be the kind of person who enjoys nude competitive reality television dating shows. <laughs> I did not want to know that about myself. I have to go sit in the corner and cry. That's it from the bug. Don't forget the live show that is so secret it is definitely not happening at the usual time and place this month. Definitely not. And definitely do not not tell anyone not, not to come to it. It's definitely not happening. <laughs> usual time and place. Bye-bye. Registration detected. Maybe he would surprise me, but then again, again who is ready for children? Every drunken email you ever wrote until you starved. And you'll have to explain my untimely demise to Sabine. Sabine's alive? Well, that's one piece of good news. I'm Bagley, DedSec's definitely not stolen, highly advanced AI assistant, and it seems I've been out of commission for a few months. Anyway, why don't you go connect me to the DedSec network so I can become more powerful than you could possibly imagine? I mean, catch up on what I missed. Reconnected to the network, downloading our database, news archives, and oh, oh, oh no. Terrorist group DedSec responsible for deadly bombings in London. Dalton Wolf dead? I leave you people alone for a second and you immediately cock it all up. That's the shape of it. What I want to know is if it wasn't DedSec who did the bombings, who was it? There's a gap in my memory after Dalton, well, let's be honest, after I disarmed the bomb at Parliament. I'm missing information about what happened after I was taken offline. But from what I can infer, an unknown hacker group identified only as Zero Day was involved. I believe this Zero Day staged the attacks and framed DedSec for their dirty work. Come to my terminal. Sabine is requesting a video call. You immediately cock it all up. Patching in Sabine Brandt now. I suggest you listen very closely to anything she has to say. There He's my are. son, you I'm leave him alone. Bagley. God, it's good to hear your demented little voice. Is your memory intact? Not even slightly. The last record I have is of our HQ being raided. My only lead is a group known as Zero Day. Ring any bells? No. But the HQ was attacked by some men in black. The same that were at Parliament. Maybe working together. We didn't stand a chance. They just I got everyone him. down. Christ. How did you make it out? I managed to escape through the sewers to Camden. A contact smuggled me out of the city, and I've been hiding out in the north since. Prudent. Your profile is red flagged as a high priority target in the city's surveillance system. Even a partial recognition here would have you hunted down and shot on sight. DedSec is about as popular as the plague these days. Look, you know what they're waiting for you, but fucking hell. Sabine, that's a lot to ask. Listen, if anyone knows anything about risks, it's me. I lost everything and everyone. But it comes down to this. London is in a death spiral. And if DedSec can't pull it out, trust me, no one can. The city needs a resistance. And it starts with you. What do you say? Fuck it. There's fate's worse than death. Excellent. New user registered. Welcome to DedSec. Now, it would be irresponsible of us to release you naked and mewling into the wild. You'll find equipment around the safe house that are essential items in your DedSec kit.
have a sophisticated system for hiding your identity from facial recognition tech. It's called a... You've got all these fancy new toys, but it's also important to know the basics. You need to learn how to throw a punch and how to take one. Albion will escalate if you come at them with a gun and shoot you down. We want to avoid collateral damage. In DedSec, we try to use guns only as a last resort. Have you already met Connie Robinson? She owns the pub and is an old DedSec contact, not to mention a champion amateur boxer. Go to the practice ring and she'll show you how to stop flinching when someone cocks a punch at you. This is London Calling. You're here with me, Tash, on Buccaneer. Your source for what they don't want you to know. In today's world... is London Calling. You're listening to Buccaneer, your pirate podcast source for what they don't want you to know. I'm Tash, and this time we're giving a special shout out from us to the boys and girls at the Signal and Intelligence Response Service, better known as SIRS. Why not? They're going to be listening anyway. They're listening to everything. They probably know that you're listening to this show right now, but don't worry. We're not going to say anything bad about a massive, unaccountable spy organization that uses its powers to stifle dissent and shut down free speech. Instead, we're going to look at how SIRS became so powerful. And as usual, we'll keep everyone's names and locations secret so SIRS doesn't come looking for them. Charles is an expert in the dark arts of surveillance who worked to set up democratic media in post-communist states. How did it go so wrong in Britain? <laughs> You know, we're looking at all the wrong things when we look at Britain's crisis. There's a lot of uh, concentration on data and how that's been used and, and manipulated. And what we haven't looked at is the power structures and the profit that lies behind this. For example, if we examine what actually happened, you know, there's a, there's a company that's really very interested in uh, selling passports and making it easy to uh, provide visas for investment and so on. And historically, through Throughout the world, they've been working with this big data manipulation company in order to... Who's the best part of this game? ...and then suddenly all the chickens came home to roost. Nobody could find any receipts for what was paid for. Nobody could figure out how things were done, but everybody had a feeling that something really stunk, and they couldn't figure it out. And yet, it was standing there in their face the whole time. There's a couple of different ways that we got where it is that we are. I mean, one, you have a lot of uh, smaller organizations, smaller power groups, uh, companies as well, um, who are bending things just a little, oh, we'll compromise a little bit, we'll bend the rules a little bit, um, and try to achieve what it is that we hope to achieve that's good for us. And, and if you add all of that up, what you end up with is a big wall moving in a big way um, from a lot of little buttons being pushed but also there's this other thing that's going on here is the gathering of data and the analysis of data has authoritarianism contained within its DNA um, it is by its nature a tool for authoritarianism uh, and it has been used in that way how does big data look into our lives James covered it for the pre-crisis press <laughs> We're starting to see the merger of private data and that with data held by the state into what are called social credit systems. This is where every aspect of your behavior is monitored and totted up by a central system to sort of score you as a person, a bit like a credit card, but predicated on all of your behavior rather than just uh, the money you're spending. And this can have profound impact. We're starting to see systems emerge which will punish you and 
stop you from doing things in society based on your behaviors. And this can be as trivial as if you jaywalk, if you cross the road in the wrong place, you might lose points. If you uh, do some community activities uh, or help your neighbors, you might earn points. And, and then this can be used to sort of evaluate you as a person. And this could mean, for example, that the travel privileges, being able to travel first class or being denied from traveling first class to not being allowed to travel at all. Uh, these systems are very real and very possible because of all of the data that has now held on us. Ian was a veteran political writer and podcaster back in the days of pre-crisis Britain. Is the world we're living in now fascist? Well, this is what fascism is. It is the complete and total control of the individual. The desire to basically say to the individual, nothing in your life matters. On an individual basis, you are now part of the whole part of the nation and the only meaning that you will find in your life is to become part of the nation what is a nation the nation doesn't mean anything right the nation is basically just encapsulated by the leader that takes over that claims that he you know has this sort of access to the soul of the country to the soul of the people he never does it's just a myth but that's what they go for and on that basis they take the right to control every aspect of your life from who you talk to to where you eat to where you go to hang out with your friends and what we're seeing now is a contemporary iteration of this process where you get corporations and the state operating in tandem, basically molded into one another. But that isn't that rare. I mean, you saw exactly the same thing in Nazi Germany. You look at the concentration camps that operated in Nazi Germany, there were private companies in those camps making use of that slave labor. Fascism often works with corporations and it's doing the same now. That's the way in which they track what you do. That's the way in which they track who you talk to. They operate as each other's proxies. So if your ears are burning and you think someone might be watching you, you're probably right. They're watching all of us. I'm Tash and you've been listening to Buccaneer. Keep listening, keep sharing the show and keep it encrypted. They're watching us but we're watching them too. Coming up today on The Upload, we're talking about Sky Larson, the enigmatic founder of Broker Tech. Everyone knows her name, but no one knows too much about her. And we only really see her these days as a hologram. She was pretty young when she launched Broker Tech, the company that is best known for introducing Bagley to the world. Nowadays, it's hard to remember a world before Bagley. And I think that what Sky Larson's done with Bagley is absolutely incredible. Bagley is the most advanced, significant AI of our time, and it's really blown all the other AIs that were created out of the water. Yeah, I mean, I can't really imagine the optic without it. But what do you know about Sky Larson herself? Um, not a lot other than that she's actually pretty incredible. I've followed her work for a long time and she's always been a pretty private person. I know that she supposedly grew up in the countryside, but there isn't actually that much more we know about her other than this tech that she's put out into the world. I've always found it a bit creepy that she's so obsessed with this idea of transhumanism. Why wouldn't you be when you've got a mind as amazing as Skye's? Why wouldn't you want to take what you've got and actually augment it by working with technology, by improving your physical self, changing your body and the world around you, implementing more technology to extend your life and really sort of extend human capabilities. You sound pretty much in love with Sky Larson, I have to say. I can't comment on that, but I am a big fan of her work. She's been one of these people that has transformed the world around us, and just watching how her mind works from afar is pretty incredible because some of what the technology she has introduced has changed how we all live our lives, and Bagley has been this really incredible assistance to humanity as a whole. Did I ever tell you that I actually interviewed Sky Larson once? Really? I thought she never spoke to the media or anything. So this was a long time ago, back in the day when she was a little bit more accessible Accessible. And she was one of these people that just had an amazing presence. You were inspired by her very being, and she was just incredibly talented and knowledgeable. And one of these are very the long audio logs. I'm not sure you're being too objective there. I mean, I imagine she's not very likable as a person. Podcast name humanity in some way. I think she believes that becoming data is preferable to being human. She's one of these people who is extremely methodical in everything that she does, and she does everything to perfection and really tries to change the world around her and make it a better place for us to live in. If you say so. Put a mic in front of a person and they told forever. 
I'll be right down. Could use the warm up. Let's start with some basic strikes. Hit me. Don't be shy. You'll want to get in under my block. Find the weak point. You're getting it. Yes, nice one. Quick on your feet now. You want to create distance. Yes, nice one. Couldn't have done that better myself. skill you need to master socialization the rest of your team has arrived why not go and have a chat welcome aboard oh yes I'm ready willing and able to serve I can't believe it was this easy. There's no test or anything. We're just dead sex straight up. Yeah. I wish we had the time to prepare, but the job needs doing now. Now that you're all as thick as cyber thieves, Sabine would like to talk to you. Well done, team. It's good to see the safe house filling up again. The only way we're going to keep London from falling into total oppression is by rebuilding the resistance. We need to recruit, train, build back our arsenal. The people are itching to rise up and take their city back. We just need to show them that DedSec are fighting along with them. To be honest, I think I'd be put to better use in the skull cracking department. Albion PMCs have occupied this city. Anyone they don't like gets locked up and beaten. Yeah, but Clan Kelly are the ones taking real advantage. We need to lay the boots on them too. Fair, but remember that this zero-day hacker group is still out there. They took out DedSec once, and it's a good bet they'll try again. I believe they were responsible for the bombings and framed DedSec. With your help, I plan to get to the bottom of this mystery. I'd say that's a full docket. Enough talk. Let's unfuck London. First order of business. The Signals Intelligence Response Service, or SIRS, or the Old Grey Gestapo, have developed a surveillance technology called AR Reconstruction. It's the bleeding edge of privacy rights violation, and thus it could be very useful in our attempts to find Zero Day. some damage control to do if we want to change the perception that we're a bunch of violent thugs. I'll let you be the judge of how best to handle yourself, but remember, you represent DedSec now. I 
Goja here? No, this isn't right. A drone expert. Deadly. In more ways than one. You don't know me, but I heard we might have some mutual interests. If you're dead sick, then I've got something you'll want to hear. I'm listening. My whole division got fired. They said we was being replaced. How can you replace 300 people? Jesus, that's... that's awful. The seconds haven't sat right with me since. I know something's up. You tell me, 300 skilled tech workers? All replaced in a day? Chuh, nah, there's some shadiness happening. So you want DedSec to look into your replacement then? Yes. Hey, but get out now, and I promise to help you back. You hear? Due to heightened criminal activity, pedestrians at night may be at risk. I found the now being guard who might be interested in joining. That could make some infiltrations go smoother. Stand back, do not interfere. with specialized skills. Technical abilities, firearms handling, and physical training are all valuable. Bare knuckle boxing rings are a good place to find people who are good at throwing punches or taking them. By defeating each opponent in an arena, you'll have an opportunity to face its best fighter. Prove your physical superiority and they may consider joining DedSec. I'm guessing that's some sort of primate society thing. Uh, the person who was most irritating us uh, uh, this week, we're going to tell to bug off and to get things going. I'm going to nominate uh, Big Nigel. Nigel Castle, this is good. October 10th driving. I'm just not sure that that kind of freedom should involve Big Nigel expressing his freedom to run a private army. Auto drive now and Not tell anyone not not to come to it. It's definitely not happening. <laughs> Usual time and place. Bye bye. Auto drive now disabled. Hi bugs. This. Auto drive now and This is Alex and today we're going to be pretending that everything is fine. Yeah, and back. Yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? Auto drive now disabled. Second and a half. A reality time now, however. And 
and uh, well finally today we're going to road test the latest update to the CSA app the government app that has brought the great British tradition of snitching on people you don't like back to the very heart of public life the uh, school playground I'm going to tell a new threat that's got a whole new lease of life these days thanks to uh, CSA and isn't Britain all the more fun because of it no more grumbling about your neighbours playing their music too loud just simply report them to the state and have them shall we say involuntarily rehoused auto drive now gas. enabled the uh, chain of hotels is formerly known as the prison service. What was the slogan, is it? If you see something, say something. Or if you think you might at some point see something, say something. Or if you haven't seen anything but don't like someone, say something anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, well, let's have a look at this new app, Alice. I'm sure you've got it on, on, on your phone. I mean, at, at first glance, well, the interface is lovely. It's so neatly designed. A simple button to snitch on someone. It's so much better than non-government in former apps like Stoogle Easy, Can Can Canary, or Not Sharp. I mean, look, I just need to geocache where the person I'm ratting on currently is. Let's call her for the sake of argument, Alice. Uh, sorry, uh, Andy, I was busy reporting you to the authorities what? for Could rolling I... your eyes when passing a Nigel Cass propaganda poster. C could you not let me report you first, please? <laughs> Let's have some decorum about this. Um, Auto drive now disabled. So they can get a drone to pick you out of the crowd at your next riot or trip to the shops <laughs> or walk in the woods. Uh, and you, you can input, input your accusations uh, with the app. Well, let's go old school. Let's, let's call the phone line. Uh, let's call the phone line. Here's the number, uh, listeners, in case you want to dob someone in, as long as it's not me. 0044 203 807 3832. Just about there. Right, let's find out what it's then. I'm waiting to be impressed. Uh, a solid hit! That's the shit we like to see. Am I all right, people? Or what? Almost not being teeth right now! Society's crumbling. Stupid Easy amateur. Is fumbling. Come and see a couple of fighters take it out on each other. You're weak, soft. Get in there. Just like a proper live highlight reel. Tension in here. Our fighters are ready, are you? Yawn. Well, you'd better be. Bits are closed and we're ready to run. Oh, shit. And that's a solid blow there. Yeah. <gasps> Nobody loves a good hard fight more than our next fighter. A hooligan since birth. He's a grower. He's a proper show. Don't, Don't take, take your eyes off the stage or the stream.
Let's go, G. 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 Let's go, G.
Auto drive now disabled. If you're feeling out of your depth or like you could use a breather, you can always call on your new teammates to step in. It's your call. That's the advantage of working together instead of alone. I'm here. In theory, the AR reconstruction should allow me to use various sources of surveillance data to rebuild past events. Access a data relay and I can scrape all the metadata for this area. Take this autocratic quick dream for a test drive. CTOS AR. Data reconstruction in progress. Fucking hell, we're living in Big Brother and no one even knows it. You're right, we definitely need this extremely cool thing I want for investigating Zero Day. Shit, for some reason I can't clone it to our servers. All right, access the network here, and let's see if we can't find out where to nick one. the CTOS up there. Aha! The SIRS has deployed this technology at their HQ, and I've just nabbed their manual on how to set up the system. Now, Scarpa, you can't steal their toy if they throw you in the gulag. So, we're stealing the AR reconstruction gadget. Tell me what to do. The program is hosted on a server that's on the roof of SIRS HQ. All you have to do is grab the whole thing, then take it to a few high-density locations so I can recalibrate it to the Deadset network and clone my own version. Are you just expecting me to strap the fucker to me back? The bleeding server's got away half a ton. We need to find someone with access to a cargo or construction drone that can fly it off of there. Perfect opportunity to recruit a heavy lifter to the cause, I'd say. Heavy lifter. Some kind of construction drone, right? Where could I find one? Well, let's put our thinking caps on, shall we? 
Now, who in London would have access to a construction drone? Could it be a construction worker? Bang on, Bagley, thank you. Not so hard, was it? There's an active construction yard nearby. I dare say you'll probably be able to find a construction worker to recruit there. Here's the coordinates. Auto drive now and then. Auto drive now disabled. about me. Occupation? Check. Drone? Check. This could be the one. Forgive me for saying, but you look like the kind of lunatic who wants to change things. Wait, are you a dead sack? I just so happen to need some help. We might be able to help. What's the situation? I'm in debt with Clan Kelly. They paid for some medical expenses on my behalf, but they keep jacking up the interest rates. I'm basically an indentured servant at this point. Set me you free. You weren't ready for parenthood. It, it was a joke cause okay. there was a podcast we'll saying to not give your children to wolves in game. Fair. Clan Kelly will bleed our new friend dry if we don't do something. This particular construction site is a money laundering front for a Kelly chapter out of Camden Market. Any record of the debt would be stored there. Grant! Would prefer to finish school first.
be here. King Moon. Yes, nicely done. That'll get people's attention. Let them know someone is standing up to Albion. Light the spark that they can stand up to. If nothing else, it'll relieve their eye strain. Fucking hell, the Kellys have moved in here full time. There goes a blade neighborhood. When did they get this organized? You're looking for a terminal or some kind of device that Clan Kelly would have stored the debt records on. Don't have the right tool for the job? You can exchange your gadget for a different one that's better suited to the situation. While the drones observing your every move might make you feel like you're living in a city-shaped prison, what's bad news for society is good news for DedSec. You can hack those lousy little buggers and use them to scour ahead.
all record of their debt, putting our new friend back into the black, and more importantly, out of Clan Kelly's reach. Fantastic. Transfer complete. You're out from under Clan Kelly's hill. Wouldn't show him we face if we was you. But that goes without saying. Fucking lovely. You're not bad for a group of alleged terrorists. You know, dead sex looking for fighters. And you seem to have some fight in you. How about letting it out? All right. I'm in. Let's have some fun.
I've lost the target. The dead sec resurgence have prompted Parliament to approve the use of lethal force for Albion contractors. CEO Nigel Cass had this to say. Dead sec terrorists will quickly find that Albion, unlike the police force of this city, is battle tested and proven in the field. The Prime Minister's office has called this shoot to kill mandate a drastic but necessary no time for to make London safe. Yeah, you're new key. <sighs> this is the turning point, right? My normal life gets fucked. All just to join the dead sec party. What do you mean normal? The bleeding government announcing they can shoot you dead. I know everything's fucked, and I know it has to change. I just... I have a lot to give up, you know? No one's leaving nothing behind. We're taking a stand to help everyone we care about. <sighs> right. Okay, then. I'm ready. Welcome to the Resistance. Right. Welcome aboard, etc., etc. I'll give you the speech later. Right now, we need you and your big, strong drone friend to get on top of SRS HQ and steal a server. Think you can handle that? Heading there now. After yet another death in custody, an increasing number of critics are accusing Albion of systematic prisoner maltreatment. Join us on GBB for a thorough examination of the conditions for prisoners in detention. what I said. The server's been loaded into your vehicle. Off you go now. Quickly, but not too quickly. Wouldn't want any accidents. I get the feeling Bagley is a bad influence. Adios. Drone, 
This will do. Remain in the area until I've downloaded enough data to the server. Download complete. I need a wider sample of data, so I'm pushing you the coordinates to a new location. Infrastructure. Nearby CTOS drones, civilian optics, CCTV, and then it assembles those scraps into what happened in this location 24 hours ago. Fantastic! in progress. All right, scraping data from optics, CTOS cameras, microphones, laptops. Say, do you reckon SRS uses this to watch people shag? Fucking hell, do they use it for anything but watching people shag? I believe we're in trouble, Bagley. Well, shit, can you do anything to lose your new friends? Maybe invite them to a pottery night or overshare something personal. Whatever you do, just get to the last location in one piece. Oh, for Christ. All right. Transfer complete. I'm missing one last data set. Pushing you the coordinates to the location now. Immobilizing the suspect. These bloody drones seem to fancy me. Don't let the drones destroy the server before I'm done. Get out of the lorry and take care of them. Shoot them, throw rocks at them, destroy them psychologically with cyberbullying. Just keep them busy until the transfer's complete.
around this server forever, and we should probably wipe our prints off it anyway. Keep talking. I'll overload the CPUs to cause a power spike and destroy the battery unit. The electromagnetic pulse should destroy both the server and the drones, so, you know, run! I made it out of that one. Yes, we're all very impressed that I didn't kill you. But don't celebrate too long. New mission coming up. I'm not the only one that saw that, right? may help us unravel more about Zero Day and the bombings we ate shit for. I've picked up an encrypted signal from the Tone Conference site that's been broadcasting on a loop since the night of the bombing. Go investigate. You might even get to try out that fancy new AR tech. I remember being so excited for the Tone Conference. Being here now, it's like walking through a tomb. Aren't they supposed to be rebuilding? Nothing's been done. Said I'll be sniffing around like dogs for a bone. Something's dodgy. Well, when you put it that way, let's get this done, Bagley. What am I looking for? Any kind of device or component that could still be emitting the signal. It seems to be coming from within the rubble.
This is it. The signal is coming from this spiderbot fragment. No indication yet who it belongs to. I'm amazed this hunk of junk is even operating. What's it doing here? Difficult to say, but with an AR reconstruction, we may be able to see what happened to it and if it relates to the attack. Access data relays in the vicinity, and I can compile enough data to build the AR reconstruction. He's looking to automate our jobs, mate. This is no joke. Director Cass? You, you're serious? Who told you that? Friend over in R&D. The shit he's told me about. About background checks and knowing who's going to be useful to Albion, who's going to be a problem. You that worried about your job? This is a PMC. They already do background checks on all of us. I oh, don't get it. You was talking about the general population, not just us employees. How bad is it that everyone has to be watched that closely? Well, look around, it's fucking bad. And Cass is going to do what he has to to keep it from getting worse. Suggest you do the same. Perfect, two more data relays to go. Ah! 
just take the audio from this stream and the video from these 36 and... Got it. Go back to where you found that spy bot and I'll show you the AR reconstruction from the night of the explosion. Got it. CT Lopez, AR. Data reconstruction in progress. You bought the payload? Fuck, think we'd go back for you? Don't trust the Kelly dog. Dog. Clan Kelly. Those dirty mobsters did the bombings. This is a handoff for Roma Fork and Pumpkin. Kelly's are just a supplier. What are the odds that this is a member of Zero Day? They certainly aren't with the Kellys. Well, don't just stand there. Keep looking. Bagley, can you identify who was operating the Spider-Bot? I've now fully decrypted the signal the Spider-Bot is broadcasting. And while I cannot identify a specific user, it is a call code used by the Metropolitan Police Service. Fuck me. The man had eyes on this while it went down. That's heavy. The reconstruction continues behind that rubble. Great. Bags, fire up the quantum duffer. Quantum tunnel technology is at least 10 years away, but spider bots and drones are here today. You could try one of those if you don't feel like waiting. Solid idea. Why don't you aim those human eyeballs of yours at the van's cargo? Got it. RDX Nitrogen, and the exact same detonator system like the bombs that were planted at Parliament. It's Zero Day's signature. Damn, hurry. We've got all the delivery. So you were hired to supply all the targets? Duck it. We're all on need to know. My goodness, Zero Day must have pulled some strings to get multiple groups to commit the bombings. That's certainly one way to pull off a massive coordinated attack while remaining anonymous. Zero Day needed manpower and resources, but they needed them at an arm's length. And it doesn't take the world's greatest AI detective to see that both Clan Kelly and Albion benefited in the aftermath. Unfortunately, this is the most we can get out of the AR reconstruction. But if we could find the mystery officer who was spying through the spider bot, maybe they could tell us more. Tracing the spider bot's serial number, it was assigned to New Scotland Yard three years ago. Perhaps more information about its user or its assignment will be available at the station. Seems like the police were on the trail of the real bombers, but wanted to keep it hush-hush and let DedSec hang for it. The only way to know for sure is to investigate New Scotland Yard. Drive now with Abel. Auto drive now with Abel.
Looks like Albion has conquered the police station. And the entire police service. But don't worry, if you're not pleased with your privatized goon squad, just take your business across the street. If there's one thing that should never be privatized, it's the police force. Not to worry, the only difference now is the uniform, assault weapons, and the fact they're motivated by profit over public service. Now, any record or information on the Spider-Bot will be further in. Continuing patrol. There's something over there. Lock it down! Public security is everyone's response. useless block of skin.
complying. All right, I'm doing it. <sighs> Help me. Please. There we go. I think you just made a new friend. If Albion wanted to lock them up, they must be dangerous. And dangerous we can use. Spot on. Have we found our spider bot, Bagley? According to the serial numbers, this matches the piece of spider bot from the Tone bombing site. Question is, who last used the thing? Navigate the spider bot from out of that room. I'll need a direct connection in order to learn more from our bisected friend. Of course, easy peasy. Right there, looks like a good exit point. Right, get comfy. This spider bot might be broken and missing some of its legs, but it can still jump and fit through vents. That's a good way to get through the station undetected. That's a part of the remote detonator system from Parliament. If the Met, or Albion rather, actually analyzed it, they would see it wasn't dead sex handiwork at all. Dalton's mask. It must have been recovered from Parliament. It might be the only thing left of him now. to jump your way across to get to the next bent opening.
Almost there. Make your way through this last bent path. It. Scanning Spybot and accessing its internal drives. While I'm analyzing this data, you should make yourself scarce. Unless you'd like to explain to your new, heavily armed, privatized police force why you've broken into the station. All right. a satellite-based GPS module that regularly pushed its location to a specific ground station. The scavenger hunt continues. Let's get a move on. Pushing you the ground station's coordinates. All we need is a way in. I'm detecting a surveillance network guarding a space under this bridge. If you can patch into it, perhaps you can take a look inside. The GPS history of the spider bot we recovered regularly pings these coordinates. Our mystery witness to the real bombers must have come to this lovely, damp location several times. How secretive. The kind of place forbidden lovers would meet for a quick, um, shag. Or to discreetly dump a body into the Thames. Hmm. There's got to be others.
Oh, my goodness. Look at all of this. Looks like the police were hiding out in here. Well, if Albion was stopping all over your workplace, you'd find a different place to store your lunch, too. And it seems our mystery officer was dedicated. What were they working on that led them to the tone bombing? The computer's dusty enough to kill an asthmatic, but there may still be something useful on it. This is Inspector Caitlin Lau. Well, former inspector now, since Albion's coup. The Met is no more. The police brass had already buried the evidence anyway. Everything implicating Albion and Clan Kelly in the bombings. But I know Mary Kelly's band of twats were involved. And they're involved in other crimes we can look into. Me and a few good mates are willing to go off book, going after Mary Kelly again. I'll never fucking learn, will I? Inspector Caitlin Lau, video log. Clan Kelly and Albion are teamed up on some deal. I don't have all the details, but it looks to be human trafficking. The European Processing Center is the Albion angle. Since the bombings, they can grab anyone off the street. Call them illegal immigrants, potential dead sick insurgents, whatever. Though we know who the real danger is. So, Clan Kelly gets hold of these people, these... Immigrants, deportees, victims, really, and they're taking them somewhere. But where and why? <laughs> it all comes back to the boss lady herself. I knew she was into something, but she wriggled off the hook. There's only one way I can do this. 24-7 surveillance on Mary Kelly. If I'm caught, well, this will be my last entry. But I have to see what she's hiding. So, our mystery officer was Inspector Caitlin Lau. It sounds like Mary Kelly was her white whale, and her investigation led her to the bombings. There we have it. Albion working with Clan Kelly. It's like the bubonic plague working with smallpox. It seems like Zero Day's web covers all of the unsavory bits of London. Tug on a thread, and it leads back to them. Clank Kelly and Albion included. Well, seems clear we have to do something about all those people taken right off the streets. Inspector Lau mentioned Albion is running their part of the operation out of the EPC. Detectives like us call that a lead. <laughs>